Uh, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Maurizio Rossi, and I feel honored to be part of this forum and to host this session on the Next Generation CD. The Next Generation CD, I believe it's not much purely architectural design aspect, but that's gonna be more about how the people and how to support the people to design their own ecosystem. Because cities, regions, nations is about people. And we need to get the diversity of identities and try to create those density of those identities coming together to create a context. This is, has to be human-centric. That's how the cities should be created. So I always believe that the mission of a city or a smart city is to make the people smarter. And that's why through this uh, session, we'll explore how the digital technologies and the creativity and the art can become a driver, a relevant driver, to hack the traditional model to build the cities or to create a master plan based on map configuration. I think through the next generations also needs to get an adaptive configuration of the city. So before have now uh, the three presentations that our guests here are going to, to do it, I want to show these brief videos that is about my personal uh, experience that has something to do with uh, this uh, uh, session. How can I get this going up? Let's, I don't know, this computer use the Apple. Ah, oh, you just go here. Oh, okay. Welcome to the H Farm campus. A dream that starts from afar with roots in a culture of innovation within the courage of startups. A place that looks towards the future, built around people, where change is made together. We know that education is the way to meet the greatest challenge facing young people and their tomorrow. And we feel the responsibility to rise to it today. The world is changing rapidly, and the pandemic's impact has made this clear. Change is everywhere, and it is profound. People, all of us, have formed new habits. Technology enriches our lives, and it's invisible, simple. It's human. Today more than ever, companies must respond with new processes, Schools must be dynamic and open up to innovation and collaboration. H Farm Campus does just that. It helps talents grow. It invests in their value. It connects them to opportunities. All this together. But this campus is more than just a place. It's an ecosystem. All to be everywhere bringing together contents, experiences, and people's dreams, no matter where they are, through contemporary languages and platforms, until we arrive where new relationships are more real than ever before. We believe in change. We believe in a country and a world where innovation, transformation, and education are one challenge together. So those two minutes are summarizing about 15, almost 16 years. And everything started with the idea to create this concept to have a living concept where diverse people joining together. 
but we started from really a grass field and Rich knows because he was there like 10 years ago so you cannot recognize now as, as big, it, 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 it's a 52 hectares. And, uh, and we started from a philosophy. There was the human philosophy, be human centric. So the idea was to create a village and we did focus the beginning to the next entrepreneur generation and we say, let's have those young kids with the digital technologies to become the next generation of entrepreneurs. The first 21st century generation of entrepreneurs. That was our aim. So at the beginning was an incubator. But this path, it was really about an adaptive configuration. And we used the structure, the infrastructure, designed to be human-centric and follow this evolution because new generations and then challenges, some are local challenges, other are big challenges, other are global challenges. So compressing this story, today it's 3,000 people on a daily basis there, 25,000 people every year comes for different purposes. It's, we run hundreds of events, and there is meetings, and there is many, many other activities. Uh, we started years ago with a uh, with, uh, uh, summer camp, and now we host students from 40 years old to 30 years old. So there is four universities, it's an international school, and, and there is the diversity there. It's a, probably the biggest asset we created. And this cross, this contamination between the young people, the next generation who comes and want to be close to their future, and the existing business and deal, because we have 400 people that just do business. So the KPIs I use are 25,000 people, thousands of jobs we created through one decades, more than one decades. Uh, we have a per-running business, which is more than 50 million euro per year. And uh, we have every year about 1,000 new graduates on all classes that moves up. So that's a real experience that came from having the mission to get a human at the center and the, all these physical place has been organized really like a technology platform. So that's why now through our guests here and the presentation, I want to, we want to explore how we can really hack the traditional model because of the technology and the creativity. Because we think the technology is something, you know, is something weird, but technology is, is everything. So the chair or a fork, or a knife or a dish, they are all technologies. So it's about to have the creativity and the, the art. And the art is the highest expression of where you can push the boundaries. And, uh, and we need now, especially now, that we are in the 21st century and we have a generation shift and we are the first two generations which are digital native because both millennials, the Z generation, the next one, alpha, they will have different challenges, completely different challenges that we did have, but they are really digital native. So that's extremely important in my opinion that we'll see now with, uh, with uh, this, uh, this uh, session and then we go and jump into a conversation, how technology, art, and creativity combined can really help to redesign the future of the city. So according with the, the schedule here, so, I'm a gentleman, so I, I, I would, uh, uh, but I want to follow the program that Thomas put together here. <laughs> and so my friend Rich, please uh, join here and introduce yourself because all of you has very interesting story uh, about your uh, life. And then you jump into the, your presentation, okay? okay. And then uh, I come back and introduce. Thank you.
Hey everyone, uh, thanks for having me. It's, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here it's, uh, in this distinguished audience of, of friends. Uh, thanks again, Mauricio, for uh, always uh, your excellent introduction and it's always great to see you. Um, my name is Rish Lotlikar. I'm co-founder and CEO of Superworld. Thank you very much for having me again here today. It's truly an honor to speak before you. Um, we have so many de devoted artists, architects, technologists, entrepreneurs, and all of us here to have come together to support and celebrate the Venice Architectural Biennale, the transformative power of art, and in particular, the rebuilding of Beirut through the rise of the ashes from the ashes initiative. After decades of civil war, and the tragic explosion last year in the port of Beirut, it's hard to think of a city more physically ravaged. But the spirit of Beirut and its people remain stronger than ever. And it is in the spirit of reconciliation, of community, and of working together to build a better world that I come here to speak to you today. I want to thank the Union of International Architects and the amazing teams at UNESCO who helped support this initiative and who have included Superworld in bringing their vision to life. Superworld has from the very beginning set out to build a better world here on Earth through augmented reality or AR. Our app is grounded in the real world and our aim continues to be to help employ AR in the area of the arts, education, community, support, and the environment. I believe that it's a misconception to assume that technology moves us further apart. Technology can, of course, be irresponsibly or with naivete, but I believe that the trajectory of technology should be to mirror the trajectory of what Abraham Lincoln called the better angels of our nature. I feel so fortunate to be with you all here today, and I hope that this international platform proves to be a catalyst for a broader, more expansive discussion, and one in which we can put forth concrete solutions and bold initiatives to build a better world. You have all probably heard of the word metaverse by now. It's a term that gets thrown around somewhat cavalierly by organizations and individuals looking to catch in on the latest buzzword. But it does, in fact, have a dictionary definition, coincidentally written by none other than one of our Superworld product managers, Will Burns. I'll spare you the definition in all its technical entirety, but in, es in essence, the metaverse represents an all-encompassing virtual umbrella created by augmented physical reality and physically persistent virtual space, including the sum of all virtual worlds and the internet. The metaverse takes the baton of the mobile internet and allows for autonomy through space, through different digital ecosystems, and through disparate social spheres. The metaverse is not a destination, it is the destination, and characterized by expressions ranging from infinite persistence to ubiquitous synchronicity. But in the very near future, we'll just call it life. This is to say that the metaverse is not something that we can see necessarily, but more of a distillation of who we are. Every industry from entertainment and education to finance to health and real estate will be revolutionized and optimized to our interests and inclinations and how we will do business in the metaverse, believe it or not, I'm confident that our fully realized metaverse will see many industries, including the almighty advertising industry, as assume a less predatory mean. Through virtual worlds, we as individuals will appear to be able to integrate our own branding and marketing to encompass the things that we love with the ability to bring these objects to life. Augmented reality will let users invent new products or enhance existing ones in the real world using AR filters and frameworks. To this end, we'll give marketing back to the individual who may curate his or her or their retail goods or services to be targeted to a built-in community. 
how will our future work and businesses be borne out through the digital manifestation of di physical objects, that is to say on the blockchain using NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens are programmable assets that have game-changing potential to help society. NFT creators like Krista and others are now using blockchain technology to access new sources of income while at the same time enabling them to create assets that can benefit causes they believe in. At Superworld, we've already seen how blockchain technology and NFTs can revolutionize the realm of social impact projects. Earlier in July, we partnered with the Flint Water Festival to present the first ever, ever social impact art exhibits of NFTs in augmented reality in Flint, Michigan. We, were featured a, we featured a handful of talented local and international artists in an art walk around Flint where people could buy and view NFT art with percentages of each sale going towards raising funds and awareness to provide safe water for communities affected by the water crisis, both in Flint and beyond. More recently, Superworld partnered with the World Bank and the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency for the Disaster Fighters campaign. The project focused on efforts to rebuild areas of Haiti after the disastrous earthquake in August, while also building resources and preparedness initiatives for hurricanes in weather-prone areas in the Caribbean. We achieved this through the minting and sale of collectible NFTs with country-specific activations, a novel and potentially powerful way to not only give in the immediate term, but also to ensure that the giving continues long after this disaster leaves the headlines. The water crisis in Flint and the earthquake in Haiti present enormous humanitarian challenges, and my hope that Superworld's approach to these and other social impact projects can give us a glimpse into how, perhaps even a roadmap for the future of fundraising and humanitarian support. While NFTs are still relatively new to market, and widely de debated regarding their value, there is no reason they cannot be used for a force of good in the world. As another example, Superworld has partnered with the reforestation organization One Tree Planted, in which every plot of NFT land purchased on Superworld goes towards planting one tree to help drive sustainability efforts across the globe and empowering real world action through the digital landscape. A move towards greater sustainability should be a critical part of any organization's business model. So while Superworld is invested in providing an amazing digital experience, we're just as invested in making a positive, tangible impact in the real world by using the sale of NFTs for good and steering our super citizens towards exploring, creating, and discovering augmented reality content that not only entertains, but educates and serves as a catalyst to help global efforts to combat, combat cl climate change, hunger, poverty, and inequality. And this is, of course, is why we're here today. I firmly believe that pr by creating a virtual realm of experience where anything is possible, where we can translate the best of what humanity has to offer into fully realized applications in the physical world, our collective knowledge and experience and our access to it will become all-encompassing in an intimate and a very human way. And what is more human than the desire to create? Very soon, artificial intelligence will allow creators to create games, applications, entire worlds in nanoseconds. Our forms will dictate our functions and vice versa seamlessly in a collaborative effort between the mind and the machine, allowing for immersive educational experiences and a nuanced social system. 
gamified for maximum intimacy and connection. But let me just be clear. Just because we choose to gamify our lives has not meant we've ushered in an area of escapism. To the contrary, we've, compromised our mor we've not compromised our moral compass or not entered a sphere of frivolity, but enhanced our emotional and physical investment in the world. The point is, just because something's fun doesn't make it frivolous. Every day I'm thankful that I, that I and the whole Super Bowl team can enjoy the process of digital creation while at the same time making hard work make a profound impact here on solid ground. Today, we take another step towards creating a bridge between this physical and digital divide. I couldn't be more excited to share in this vision to rebuild Beirut and to give its citizens access to a new dynamic and improved infrastructure and to have a more equitable economic dynamic. Right here, right now, we have all have the opportunity to do something that touches the sublime. Pablo Picasso once noted that creativity and art wash away from the soul the dust of everyday life. He is right, of course, but today we can add another clause to his quip. Thanks to the work of the talented architects, artists, 3D modelers, and augmented reality applications, creativity can not only wash away the dust of everyday life, it can give cities like Beirut a plausible future, a second chance to breathe, to thrive, and indeed to rise from the ashes in a very heroic triumph of its very soul. Thank you again. I, it's an honor to be here, and I look forward to the discussion. So this is uh, a great example that show how the technologies and the digital platforms are very close in between the virtual contents and the real life. And our, that's, uh, there was two worlds and now are becoming very, very connected, interconnected, I would say. And this is a great example. So Nadia, please you. introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. It's, uh, it's a pleasure being here. And thank you, Thomas. Thank you, I-10, for bringing me back to Venice. Um, it's, um, I have a very personal touch uh, with this city. Uh, I have been um, working with Beringo Foundation and Glass Stress um, uh, since uh, 2010. And then uh, Adventure brought me to the digital realm uh, three years ago. I met um, the co-founders of Snark.Art, uh, Misha Liebman and um, Andrea Lokin, um, that introduced me um, the, the blockchain as the new creative medium for the artists. And as before, I with Berengo Studio introduced glass as a new medium to the artists. I thought, well, that's actually not a big difference. Uh, we can use blockchain technology and push uh, the boundaries of creativity and this technology uh, to another level. Um, it's remarkable also to speak um, about uh, next generation city in Venice and speak about Beirut. Um, those both cities were based and historically based um, on its uh, invention, innovative mode and um, um, wealth and prosperity that was brought by communities. Uh, so. Of course, uh, we speak about next generation community uh, when we speak about the city, uh, any city. Um, city without community is a ghost town. And uh, I hope that um, in 15, 20 minutes, um, I will uh, show you how artistically um, through blockchain, can be brought new way to create new way of communication. And, but actually not new way of communication. As I will echo Kuhn here, 
how we can actually uh, go back to nature, how we can share and um, with generosity of the community, we can build the new ecosystem. Um, as um, I already started to tell that Snark Art was um, created, um, built 2000, in 2017, and it's one of the pioneers in NFT and blockchain. Since its beginning, we were always interested to to use um, the creative possibilities of blockchain as a socially interactive artistic tool. Uh, of course, now with technology, every pixel can be programmed, uh, can be um, can be created, and can be um, connected to to the to to the community. So we can use the social collaboration in NFT space as a blueprint for any other industries that tr helping uh, cities and to build communities because this interactive element is very important uh, for for any any community. And uh, as thanks to Hirsch already explained what NFT is. So I don't need to go to non-fungible tokens, what, what it is, but I just would like to uh, have an understanding w if everyone in this audience so, um, have un like know what actually interactive um, element of blockchain is and how it works for the community. If you understand, like just like raise your hand, don't be shy. Um, no? Yes, <laughs> great, <laughs> yeah, great. So I hope uh, pretty soon we will, um, more, we will have more raised uh, hands um, here in this room. So we started uh, with, um, in 2018, uh, with the project that called uh, 89 Seconds Atomized uh, by Eve Sussman. It's an American artist, digital artist. She um, created 15 years ago um, a beautiful film, 10 minutes video, that is uh, reimagine and reconstruct, um, revision the most mysterious painting uh, in the art history, um, Las Meninas. And uh, it's called 89 Seconds um, at, at Alcazar. Um, it was an edition of 10 um, works, 10 minutes each. And most of those works were bought by museums and uh, private collections like MoMA, uh, Whitney Museum, Lim, Samsung Museum and many others. And when you owned by, when you work uh, in the museum, of course it's uh, honorable, but the visibility is limited because either your work sits on the shelves or in the repository of the museum, or it's shown only occasionally for some exhibitions. And blockchain helps to solve this problem for the artist. And what we did, we, fractured the last edition of her video in 2,304 atoms. Um, and it, let me just try to show you the, the video. Um, it will start play. Uh, so um, this is a part of the video, we don't, we are gonna, not going to watch everything, I just show you. That you will have an impression how beautiful this artwork is. Um, so when we structured the artwork in 2,304 pieces, each atom uh, is uh, 20 pixels by 20 pixels and consists 10 minutes video. Uh, we offered it to the community for, how can I, we offered it to, to the community for $100 uh, dollars each piece. 
The value of the whole artwork was that time $230,000 approximately. And uh, so we brought this idea of decentralization of art. That time, three years ago in 2018, decentralization was forbidden word in the artwork, tra traditional uh, contemporary art. Uh, because nobody wants to say about de democratization because um, mostly it was, it worked uh, when a few people spent millions, but in our case, with this artwork, millions spent a few bucks and can become a collect the collectors of the museum piece. Um, it also brings interactivity um, to the piece, it's not only the artwork that you can watch um, and uh, you can see at the museum, but let's imagine right now uh, in this room that everyone here uh, has first crypto wallet already. Uh, you are very advanced and uh, you bought for $100 um, a few years ago, you bought one atom. This is how each atom looks like. You don't see much. You see pixels and uh, there is also sound goes. I just turned it off. Um, and uh, of course you can, what you can do with this one uh, fraction, fraction of this artwork, you can watch uh, pixels, but you can also um, exchange the pixels with other shareholders of this piece. This is one thing. Uh, another thing, you can also have access to the communal fragments. So it's practically become the owner responsibility or either open or close an access to his piece. And you can also, um, with centralized interactivity, you could uh, use this atom as a key to schedule the screening of the full video. So you can do private or public screening by yourself. So you don't need a museum, you don't need any authorities. You, as like with one atom, you can become uh, an exhibitor of the museum artwork. Um, and let's imagine, so you have this atom, and um, I schedule this screening right now. And you, with your atoms in the, your crypto wallet, you can, um, in a lifetime, you can either open or close an access to your piece. So you see the black squares over there on the video. So that means that uh, there are owners that locked they close the access. And um, you can open or close. So that means every time when the artwork is shown, it becomes a new version of the artwork. The video becomes a living um, artwork, a life, always. And it's changing. It changes because of the community, because of the power or wish of the community. And moreover, you could. Um, you could also, uh, with this artwork, it's like it's my favorite artwork that Snark, uh, Snark that art created. Um, so the artist, when she developed, the, she created her first artwork, initial artwork, 89 seconds uh, at um, Al Khazar. Her idea was to let the viewer feel himself when he looks at the video as a fly in, on the wall in that painting. So kind of like go inside of the artwork, in the, into the work. And with this um, blockchain edition, um, we could go even deeper in, in the creative process and artwork. We can go into pixels. We can, um, we, and the question is, the questions are now, how deep we can dive uh, with blockchain into the creative process and artwork itself. And how, who decide how long the artwork should remain alive? 
because with this dynamic and with this me mechanics, also artists gave a power to the community. We have now 300 um, uh, collectors of this artwork. It gave a power to the community to decide if, let's say, every one of you here will stop sharing what you own, it will, be a black, it will become a black screen and the artwork will die. So, and the artist in, in, in <coughs> with this artwork um, signify the power of the community and also how it relates and reflects through the history of art. So we have now the decision to, to do this. And uh, so far, of course, this artwork is very much alive. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we have um, many museum shows uh, with this artwork. It's uh, here we uh, did a mm, presentation in uh, Pushkin Museum. Uh, now this artwork shown in Switzerland. And um, um, we are going to show it in the Hermitage Museum pretty soon. And um, so this has uh, become uh, a piece of art that this private and public screening could actually live as long as, like, let's say you as the owner, so other collectors uh, will decide. So if with, um, if Sussman artwork, we um, created a fractional ownership and um, new way of interactivity um, with artwork, so we went with our recent project that will be released in a couple of weeks to the public. We went even further. This is the new project that we developed, um, new project by Michael Jew and um, Daniel Krivaruchko. It's called Grow, uh, Org Organic Grows Crystal Reef. This is the project that um, bring together not only the power of community and um, fractional ownership and in, in, in like involvement of everyone in the community, but it also brings the view that everyone um, there is uniqueness in in all, and it become a. Maurizio mentioned this about uh, collective identity. This project creates the collective identity. I'll show how. Oh, just a second. Yeah. So let's imagine again. Um, you, we have 10,300 uh, one uh, uh, crystals that are supposed to be generated. For now, we don't know the shape of the future crystals. Let's say, I will explain your mechanics so you understand how it's gonna work. Let's say uh, Michael or Daniel uh, did the first purchase, they bought uh, a seed of the crystal. They could identify uh, the color, desired color. Uh, they couldn't predict the shape and they bought it and they put it on their crypto wallet. So in five days, this crystal will read, like through algorithm that is generated, created, read the activity of the crypto wallets, of the crypto wallet of the owner, and generate the initial form, initial form of the crystal. But it's interesting thing that you can't hold it in, in a case, you, in an order you want to, b to bring the value to this piece, you need to relinquish ownership. You need to sell it to someone, to someone else. So let's say Michael sold it to Maurizio. Maurizio is very active in crypto world, in crypto world and uh, in you, because your uniqueness of your activity, your uniqueness that is written in your crypto wallet, 
uh, it brought extra layer to the crystal of Michael and the shape become even more beautiful. Then uh, Maurizio sold it to Rish. Um, its new layer was added um, to the crystal. Then I bought it. I'm very active in crypto space, of course. And uh, new layer, new colors, new shape. Uh, some like my like identity that I brought there also in encrypted. And then Krista got the final one, let's say. Uh, the most beautiful piece that combines and consists um, uniqueness of all of us, but at the same time, it's, it's like it's become collective identity. So there is everyone in all. And uh, you can see that we could, everyone can start building these um, crystals because we, like what we see now, we, we are in pre-sale mode now with this project, and we see that people got so excited. We, we got like 4,000 people on Discord just uh, joined in, in a week because they start, to, they understand that you can't create something very beautiful if you hold it. You need to share, you need to sell. So they started to form a sort of like families uh, because the crystal can change the form. Uh, there are seven iterations when the crystal can be, um, can be changed. And after two months, we lock the final uh, shape of the, the, the crystal will be locked. And uh, so they start to create the families that like, okay, if it's not, you can't just share, you have to sell. So they like on trust, they build each other, they trust each other. Okay, I will sell it to you, you sell it to me, you sell to me. You're, so they, be, they start to interact inside of the big community in order to bring something special to the community. And after all those crystals will be created, we will go further. Uh, <coughs> there will be this um, unique sculptures and uh, the artist we will bring it to the, just imagine, just imagine there are like 10,300 one uh, beautiful sculpture that with this uniqueness in, in all collective identities and it will become an um, ecosystem. It will become a big sculpture um, that all community will bring together and uh, we, the artists is going are going to give up give up the commercial rights to the artwork, and everyone like if we imagine this us building this community, we will become a co-creator. Everyone will become a co-creator of this final artwork and the crystal, and we we are going to create a decentralized autonomous organization that's called DAO. Uh, for this project. So the community will decide what, what is next with this project. What is next and how it's going to live. And um, that will become also uh, like incentive education and growth uh, with this project. You, in order to create value, you need to relinquish ownership and you have to share what you have with others. So just echoing uh, what Kuhn said, Maurizio mentioned, and um, Harish brought, and um, I, I'm sure that uh, many previous speakers that spoke French, I didn't understand the word, sorry, but I believe that we all speak here uh, about um, the same think that in order to create next generation community, um, it can't be created without sharing uh, and contributing to the community. And I hope uh, the, this 
artistic projects that's based on blockchain could inspire you in what industries you are working on at uh, to look at the your processes not as the mechanical process but also see it as the probably um, as the as a metaphor what actually is already created in nature and in the end i would just like to say that um, you can hear quite often that technology brings uh, us far from the nature from nature but these projects actually shows show us that blockchain if you use it properly if you really use its interactive elements actually bring us back to nature because you can uh, reconstruct what uh, has been created like with this crystal projects it's conceptually based on the idea how um, how ex um, corals uh, of polyps developed they all everyone contributes grows grows uh, separately but they all create the whole ecosystem so this is not too different from what has been created in nature and um, so I just hope that blockchain technology and art will bring more interesting adventures to many industries and influence our society in the best way thank you Thank you, Nadia. Uh, very interesting. I have been impressed about the community because the communities are the essence of a context, of a life, of a city. So this is a great example how the community can interact with the technology. So in this case, it's like the art is the way how people can co-create, can create value because of very important things and I think Krista now can show, we are moving from the information age to the awareness age, because it's a moment that the contents are going to lead and give a sense, and the technology will really help to this connection. So if we go and later we can have a conversation, if we start connecting the dots, because we saw how a platform, a digital platform is designed to connect with the real world and creating connections. And we saw through the art an example of how different identities can connect, but can co-create and generate values. And these can be scaled on a different sectors. But because the art is the highest level of creativity to expose, this is a good example. It's like a window. But this one can be applied on many diverse elements of a city. That's why a new city has to be designed accordingly with the technologies, the art, and the creativity. And I think now Krista will uh, give us some great example about content awareness and building, inspiring and become like a driver. This project is uh, called Regenesis. Regenesis because I have focused on a neglected neighborhood in the South Bronx. It is the projects of Mott Haven. Mott Haven is probably one of the poorest parts of New York. And uh, you have public housing. What I've done is I've actually um, visualized the possibility of transforming any place in the world with beauty <coughs> through the power of XR. That's virtual reality and augmented reality. You see here the towers. Many project, government housing projects in New York look the same. They're all very shoeboxy brown buildings, very oppressive architecture. And I find that when you are in an environment that what you see in your world, outside of you, becomes a mirror of the mind. So for me, I think that the transformation can happen in the real world through augmented reality you present a new possibility. I think everyone in the world can live in beauty 
and dignity, there's no excuse with technology that we have now. Anyone can live anywhere in the world with beauty and dignity. And I truly believe that if we create beauty in the environment of all people, all walks of life, then that will actually help people heal, come together, be more humane, bring peace. Thomas. Go to the bell bar to help you. We could start. Thank you. Project Regenesis. You know, the concept here is that you're really rejuvenating and rebuilding, and you're bringing new inspiration and a new vision for the future of communities that need it, that need some inspiration, some hope. And this project is really the first uh, social impact XR NFT, and what what an XR NFT is really taking the project from just a regular NFT into the metaverse and offering it as an experience for the world, for the community. We can all access the metaverse through virtual reality goggles. The Oculus is my favorite right now. And of course, through Superworld. I'm the global ambassador for Superworld. Rish and I believe that we can use the power of augmented reality to beautify, to improve communities worldwide. And through the sale of the NFT, finance change, support the community. So here we are, the metaverse meets AR. This is the community, it's called Mott Haven. And what we're trying to do here is, like I said, using art and imagination to create an augmented reality art installation in this real place. And this is possible with Superworld. I'm just going to say that within five years, we're going to be wearing augmented reality glasses. They'll be created by Apple. Once these augmented reality glasses come into the market, it's going to change the world because we will live our real lives with enhancements of augmented reality. People in Mott Haven can go outside and they can see the beauty of an augmented reality art installation. And this was basically the project for me. I want to beautify. And at the same time, we want to finance education programs for the children. Basketball. Basketball is the number one sport in that community, but they don't have a basketball team. So why not finance these social programs that not only beautify the environment, but actually uplifts them? This is the actual Mott Haven scene. This is what actually exists. But when we can actually have an augmented reality experience, even on our cell phone, that single transformation can really change the heart of people who live there, before and after. So I believe that beauty is a human right, especially with the metaverse that every person in the world can live with beauty and dignity in the world. And what I've basically integrated are healing sound and light installations on the screens. My artistic practice comes from uh, a foundation of meditation. I meditate. I actually treated my own depression and anxiety through meditation. I practice transcendental meditation. Um, I believe that art can actually heal, can actually help us get into a state of pure consciousness of the sublime. I believe that that experience is healing. And in fact, there are studies at hospitals like the Cleveland Clinic that proves that art in the hospital actually 
facilitates healing time. So why not introduce art into the public sphere through augmented reality in a major installation, in a concerted effort? And this is a very interesting component of the project where I created a basketball court designed with my art for the metaverse. But then, through Thomas, of course, I've met a wonderful uh, company uh, in Germany that can manufacture the exact basketball court in physical reality. So this project, the sale of the NFT, will finance the, the actual construction of the physical basketball court in the community. So there is then the metaverse and the physical connection, which is the future. Right now, um, these screens, why do I use the screen? Because I believe that the screen and digital technology has been used as a tool to control us, to manipulate us. It's unhealthy up to now. I believe that the screen actually, as an art intervention, can actually be used for humanity, can be used for a tool of wellness. We should be able to control the technology and we should choose to use the technology in a way that makes our communities better, that makes us healthier and not adopt the you know, the technology blindly with tacit consent to, to mine our data, to violate our human rights, let's be mindful. And also let's practice meditation because digital natives are affected by the technology. There is this, the highest rate of myopia, which is a near, nearsightedness in the world. It's a major epidemic caused by digital devices, caused by the screens, these young kids. You have more children getting eye operations at the age of 14 from near blindness because of devices. Why not use a screen for wellness? So I basically started a tour called the Continuum Tour. And actually I'm showing in China right now, you have some images um, within this collage of my installation in Aranya Beach, which is uh, in China, happening now. It was supposed to be a, a three-day project, but now it's extended to three months. And my next installation will be in Toronto, Toronto October 1st to the 4th. My mission with this project, and I'm also going to Miami Basel, my mission with this project is to get the message to every person in the world that we have to take care of our mental health and use technology as a tool for well-being and um, hum humanity to bring us together. It's time to heal. We've just come out of a major pandemic. Let's change the world in a positive way through digital art and the power of XR. Thank you. So uh, in conclusion, I think that if we look at those free presentations like free layers and we can see how a platform can connect with the real world, so with the physical, with the tangible world and how we can engage communities and then go into the inspirations driven by values. In this case, it's beauty. But that's, this is, in my opinion, the best example to see how we can create an adaptive configuration of a city, of a living context. Because we're humans, we are diverse, and the, the diversity of identity, and creating those density of identities that in the urbanism it calls the identity, but it's basically communities. It is driven by values, because values, principles, are the driving force of a society, of everything. And education, so we went through all those topics are relevant to engage and help the next generation to come to preserve and drive toward the evolution that we cannot stop it, this evolution. So I had my personal experience that I show at the beginning that it was exactly this one. Try to get some layers as a driving force, try to use the technology and be inspired. So I think to conclude that the example we just show a great example to consider how to redesign the model, the process to create the new cities 
into an adaptive configuration and not by map-driven configuration that create cities for a moment. So before to leave, because I think we conclude, I want to leave to reach one minute to explain that tonight we have the charity, right? Some stuff? Yes, I think we're doing an NFT uh, uh, auction uh, charity uh, tonight um, with some artwork. I think probably I tend probably has more information on specifics there. I don't want to, um, uh, you know, incorrectly uh, talk about the the specifics of what we're doing. But um, we're really excited about utilizing NFTs to uh, provide. Uh, resources to the rebuilding of Beirut, and uh, really appreciate all of your support here uh, as we bring art and bring these technologies together to help uh, bring attention and resources towards Beirut.